Hey kids, it's Tama. Wondering how you're doing. I think of you all a lot. Miss being together with you. Hope you're finding times to get outside and feel the sun and the wind and the rain on your face. I wanted to start these weekly videos so that we keep working on the practices and the rhythms and the songs and the art that we were learning to do so well together over this past year. So we're going to start with our opening song and wherever you are I want you to join in and sing out. The Spirit in me greets the Spirit in you. to our spiritual practices and I did stop by the church and brought some of our props you'll remember the uh, attributes we're working on these spiritual practices will exercise the muscles of our hearts our goal is to become kids who are grateful curious connected kind generous prayerful grounded, hospitable, courageous, inclusive, blessed, and centered. And we can practice those things with our uh, exercises. So I'm going to reach in and pull out. Aha! Uh -huh, that is, we did this quite recently. Is that a six or a nine? I think that's our nine, which means our body prayer this week. So let's do our body prayer that Susan taught us. Let's do that together. I'll say it with the words first and then uh, we'll do it without the words. So bow to the earth from which we came. Acknowledge the presence of God. Embrace all of creation. Embrace yourself. Surrender to all that is. Bless those on your left. Bless those on your right. Wake yourself up and everyone else. And bow to the earth to which we will return. Good job. Okay, I think it was Ben who led that this with us last time. So I'm thinking of him as I do this. Now we're going to do it without the words, just the silent body prayer. Beautiful. That's a way to center yourself in the um, in the presence of God in these uncertain days. And at this point, we're going to move on to our story from the scroll, one of the gospel scrolls. Remember, the gospel scrolls are the uh, the gold paper scrolls. Now, since I don't have the uh, the stand and the pictures with me here at home, I thought what we do is just take the story from the the big Bible books that you guys uh, were given earlier this year. And you can follow along if you have your copy at home. You can follow along with the pictures. I'm going to be starting on page 371. And then you'll see as the pictures come up on your screen, how the story unfolds and follow along in your book. I'll give you a shortened version and then you can uh, read further in your own time some of the, 
some of the additional details that I'll leave out. The one thing I want to say about this story is it starts out in a wide open, kind of bright, sunny place, lots of room to move. And by the end of the story, it's become very narrow and very dark and very hard to move through. And sometimes that's how life is. It holds those extremes. So we're going to be listening for that movement through the story and also uh, trying to think through what the, the feeling words are that will come out, what the characters are feeling, what we are feeling, what Jesus might have been feeling. And we'll share those at the end. So here's the story. Jesus enters the city of Jerusalem and the crowds go wild. They wave branches in the air from palm trees and they throw their coats to the ground and he rides across them on a donkey and they call out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. They wonder if Jesus is going to be the one that they've long awaited, the deliverer, the king who will overthrow the powers that be in in the city and across the land but Jesus doesn't go to the palace he doesn't confront the king as they might have expected rather he goes to the temple where merchants and business people are buying and selling outside of the temple of God and Jesus is upset because people are being kept from prayer They're being kept from accessing the temple where they can come before God. And so he kicks over the tables and he throws the money lenders and the merchants and the tradesmen out of the court. And he said, why have you turned my father's house? Why have you turned the house of God, which is a house of prayer, into a place for making money? and profit. And meanwhile, his friends and followers have gone to an upper room, sort of away from all the crowds, and they've laid a table, and Jesus comes and joins them for supper in the evening. And as they're gathered around, somewhat perplexed and confused by what Jesus' next move is, by what's happening here, why he didn't claim a crown or why he didn't seize the opportunity to become king. And Jesus, in the midst of that, stands up and he takes some bread and he says, this is my body, and he breaks the bread. And he picks up a, a, a jug of wine and he pours it out and he says, and this is my blood. And my body will be broken and my butt, blood will be poured out for you. And he's speaking about his own death that's about to take place which confuses his closest friends and followers even more. And one of those, Judas, actually leaves the meal and goes out to inform on Jesus, to tell the local security people, the the guards from the temple, to come and meet up with them in the garden where Jesus is headed. When Jesus gets to the garden, he's arrested and taken to the temple where the leaders of the temple question him and push him around and then eventually take him over to the Roman governor whose name is Pilate. Pilate questions Jesus again and then in front of his own people, Jesus' own people, he sentences Jesus to death. Jesus is taken outside of the city where people are executed and the soldiers make a crown of thorns and they put it on his head and they make fun of him and laugh at him saying, what kind of a king are you? And they take his robes, his outer cloak and they roll dice and gamble for it. And then Jesus is laid down on a cross and he's, his hands and feet are nailed to the cross which is lifted up. And the skies turn dark all around 
And while most of his close friends and followers, his disciples, have run off and are in hiding, the women who have been close to him through his life stay nearby at the foot of the cross. His mother is there, as well as one of his closest disciples, the one who loved him, whose name is John. And they stay with Jesus until the life goes from his body and it's confirmed that Jesus is dead. And in the crowd, there's a secret follower of Jesus, a man by the name of Joseph of Arimathea. And he comes before the authorities and asks if he can take Jesus' body down from the cross. And he wraps it in burial linens and carries it to a tomb that had been intended for his own death. And he lays Jesus' body down in the tomb. And then he and his friend Nicodemus roll the gravestone in front of the tomb. Now there's some fear, according to the Jewish leaders, the leaders from the temple, that Jesus' followers will come and try and steal the body of Jesus out of the tomb. And so they go to Pilate and ask if the tomb can be guarded. And so in the night, Pilate sends two guards with flaming torches to stand guard over the tomb and make sure nobody steals the body of Jesus. Wow, so that's quite a story. And it's the story that the whole church right around the world is going to be journeying through in the coming week, starting with Palm Sunday, when we'll do our virtual palm parade, waving our palms in the air, and then passing through Good Friday and moving towards Easter Sunday. So bear that story in mind as the week unfolds. But for now, I want you guys to think about feeling words that can go with the story. And as I look up on our feelings poster, I think that just about every emotion up here was part of that story. It was so, so broad and so diverse. So I'm curious to know which feeling words you would choose, and I wish I could hear them, but I've chosen four that I think maybe uh, represent the story best. The first one I've chosen is ecstatic because I imagine that that crowd that was gathered when Jesus rode into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday were an ecstatic group of people. They thought, okay, this is it. All our dreams coming together here. Jesus is going to lead it the way to a, a, new, a new kingdom. And then things kind of went sideways when he ended up at the temple and there was a lot of anger that went down at the temple so I chose angry as my next word I think anger on both sides uh, anger. anger on Jesus side who felt like people were being kept from prayers in the temple and anger on the side of those who were uh, leading the the temple ritual and feeling like Jesus was cutting off their livelihood and every, everything that they worked to protect and keep going. And then when Jesus gathered with his closest friends, his followers, his disciples in that upper room, I'm guessing that there was quite a bit of anxiety going on. So I chose the word anxious because I'm, I'm feeling as though those uh, disciples probably wondering what's Jesus talking about? It's death and things coming to an end. And there, was, there would have been anxiety for sure. And then the fourth word, we're usually only allowed three, but in a long story like this, I think we're allowed a fourth one. And I chose just sad because it ends in a very sad place. There must have been a lot of tears at that point where people realized that uh, Jesus' life had been taken from him 
and that Jesus himself had been taken from him. So it ends in a very sad place. So I welcome you guys to take, choose one or two of those four words and do some art with it. Do some music, maybe do a painting if you have paints around the house, or do a little bit of choreography and film it. And maybe we can, one of these days, have a, a, a Zoom connect where we share some of the work that we've done. So we're going to end off with our closing song. And uh, you'll remember the words, be not afraid. And we practice songs like this for times like this, when the world seems a little bit in upheaval and we don't know what's going on. We fall back on these songs and they hold us. Now, the only version I could find online of this song was Sounds like a British choir, so they're singing like the Queen with a very British accent. Maybe like Professor McGonagall in, in, at Hogwarts. So if you want to sing with a British accent and pretend you're at Hogwarts, you're welcome to. Or if you want to sing just like we normally do, then just shout it out there and sing from wherever you are. Be not afraid, sing out for joy, Christ is risen, alleluia. Be not afraid, sing out for joy, Christ is risen, alleluia. Oh, kids, before you leave, one more thing. Look what I brought from the church, a little bit heavy, lugged it along in the panniers on my bike because I thought every time we meet on a Sunday morning when, or whenever it is that you're able to watch this video, uh, just to honor your presence and coming together, I'm gonna move, we'll say just one rock over each week. But look at that, it's not gonna be long, probably by the time this social distancing is over that all our rocks will have made it across and it will be party time.